as some commentators have said, it's the worst crisis since the end of the Cold War or since the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis, or even since Hitler's annexation of the Sudetenland in 1938. Well, I think it is our moral duty to stand up to Russia, and I think what is happening is equivalent to Hitler's annexation of the Sudetenland in 1938, and we must go in and defend the Ukrainians. That if Russia destabilizes Crimea even further, then there will be far-reaching economic and political consequences. And I think it's right not to have defined that too precisely, but certainly it may be that it would have to involve military action. War with Russia? What are you talking about? No, I agree. That should be the ultimate option. Never to say that you won't use the military option, because that gives Putin an extra card to play with. Yeah. Well, some support. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's Jeremy Corbyn MP. This is pretty worrying stuff, isn't it? But well, then we have a man who yeah. has uh, in basically uh, breached international treaties and has moved into another country. Well, what my colleagues there were saying seems to me like a recipe for war and incredibly dangerous. I am not supportive of... <laughs> I'm not supporting... You got more of, support than they did. Though. I'm not supporting of uh, Russian military action yeah. and I do think there has to be a peace process and there has to be a process of demilitarization of the Ukraine and sticking to the original non-nuclear agreement. But I'd also say this, the hypocrisy of the West is unbelievable on this. Where was the legality in the war in Iraq? Where was the legality of so many of the other interventions that have been made, made elsewhere? And if one reads very carefully what all the Ukrainian forces are saying, yes there is a very nasty far-right force in Ukraine at the present time, which is part of the government. There is also a more liberal grouping in the Ukraine. There is also a very large Russian um, grouping in the Ukraine who obviously have some loyalties towards Russia. Does the Ukraine break up? That's a matter for the Ukrainian people. But the idea that we should move the whole thing in rhetoric towards some kind of military war against Russia seems to me an absolute disaster. I think we are indeed in a potential pre-war situation. It's not just about Crimea, there's a threat to European security in general. But I think the wider issue is that the EU has got very close to NATO. NATO has been pushing very hard to expand eastwards. Inevitably, Russia is going to get very nervous if NATO sets up bases all around its borders. That, in turn, encourages Russian militarism. Can't we go back to the point where Ukraine was a nuclear-free country, that was not going to be a member of any alliance, either with Russia or with NATO, and start to demilitarize and de-escalate the situation and allow a proper debate, much longer than a week, mm. for people to decide their own future yeah. in the Ukraine. And it seems to me there's a terrible danger of a rush to a combination of an economic and a military war, and goodness knows what the consequence of that will be. Goodness knows. Well, the UN, uh, clearly, if it takes a one-sided decision, is going to get vetoed by somebody, so yeah. clearly it cannot take that. Therefore, it falls to the UN to try and bring the sides together and pursue a process of demilitarization. But I'm quite alarmed by the way in which the NATO General Secretary seems to be ramping up the ante all the time. It's not his job to go around promoting wars. He's meant to be answerable to a number of different governments. He appears to be behaving as though he's some free agent that can say and do what he likes and, and, and develop this very, very dangerous scenario. Ukraine has been the war ground of Europe for two centuries. Millions have died in Ukraine from famine, from war, from occupation, and from disasters. Let's not visit that upon them again. Mm. Let's try and de-escalate, demilitarize, and bring about some kind of dialogue and peace process which will guarantee a peaceful future for those people and for Europe. Yeah. And military intervention would have to be a last resort. But my question to Jeremy Corbyn would be this. What do you do? Try to negotiate by all means, that's what we're trying to do. But what do you do if Russia it does not pull its troops back to their base? I'm not sure that the Russian people, having lost so many in Afghanistan in the past, want to see Russian lives lost in the Ukraine any more than people in this country want to see us going into some ludicrous, futile war which will have to end up with a political settlement. Yeah. All wars end with a political settlement. Let's start from the point of a political settlement, not start from the point of building up armed forces, moving fighter jets to Poland, mobilizing the fleet, and all these kind of things. Negotiate through. And secondly, last point, the West has no moral authority whatsoever to lecture on this. After drone strikes, after Iraq, 
after so many other internal coups and conflicts around the world. Surely hand the thing back to the UN to try to bring about some kind of peace process and de-escalate the rhetoric which has been in danger of plunging us into a catastrophic war with nuclear implications. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you all. Thank you.